So here's why the Yankees, uh, I think, are would be well off or best off sh- striking early in free agency. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that have been talked about over the years for the Yankees. They should get him. They should get him, and blah blah, and and, and so on. And and the Yankees haven't, obviously, but these guys are starting to be moved to other teams. My gut's telling me that someone like Josh Hader is going to go to Toronto, and you know, and and maybe the Red Sox are going to wind up getting you know, a, a really, 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 really good multi-positional player, whether it be Ketel Marte or even somebody like Whit Merrifield, somebody who's going to have value. Even though he's older, he still has a lot of value. So the teams that the Yankees are trying to compete with, you know, going after Tampa, I think are going to make these types of moves, which is why the Yankees would be well off to strike early. In, in free agency and trades and, and be proactive and try to address a lot of these issues early on instead of waiting for the price to come down or whatever it is. I mean, at some point, Cashman's going to have to be aggressive early and not try to strike, you know, late. And because a lot of times it leaves the Yankees with, you know, in terms of starting pitchers, it leaves them with not the best options. The aces have already been moved. Right or the top front line guys have already been moved, so they're getting guys like Andrew Heaney. They're getting like, and it's just you know what's going to be next? Zach Davies next year from the Cubs. Like, is that the guy the Yankees really want? I mean, that's sure. like come on. So I think striking early for the Yankees would be a wise idea, and you know it it, it would be an extremely wise idea. And you know, and again, this is across the board. Like you know, guys that I've and I've had mentioned of Kate Marte or Brian Reynolds or. Certain guys like that, even Eduardo Escobar, who's a multi-positional guy, but he's a free agent, so the Yankees won't have to trade for him. He would be a guy to bring in who can give some really, really good infield protection. And he's got a good bat, and he's versatile. He's a switch hitter, and he's a contact hitter. So he checks off a lot of boxes for the Yankees, a lot of them. You know, Brian Reynolds checks off six million boxes. So does Ktel Marte. And, you know, are any of them gettable? I don't know. But if the Yankees have a good enough package, they will be. And the Yankees have enough guys to get a guy like that. And we mentioned Matt also. We mentioned we mentioned Matt Chapman, but you know the earlier you can get a guy like this into the fold, the easier it will be to kind of put the other pieces around him, and or build around Cole. I mean, I would I would go for day one of free agency. I'd be calling Carlos Rodon. I'd be I'd, I'd be at his front doorstep, or Robbie Ray, or both of them. You know, I like I'd be camped out in front of their houses. Luis Castillo, same thing. I'd be I'd be working to get him in a trade. So. We've talked about a lot of these guys already. You know, the Yankees definitely need a front-line guy. And, and relievers, I'd be over at Ray Seal uh, Iglesias' house. You know? Ray Seal, just day one. You know, other guys like Michael Lorenzen. I mean, there's, there's some power arms that the Yankees can get. There's some crafty arms that the Yankees can get. I think they need two in the rotation, two in the bullpen, at the very least. You know, we have to let Johnny Lasagna come back and make sure that he's healthy. We gotta let. We have to not wear Chad Green out two-thirds into the season. Okay, and that's where you know more reliable depth comes into play. Yeah, I mean we had the depth, but a lot of them got hurt. You know, Zach Britton had a terrible year, and O'Day got hurt, tearing, like tearing his hamstring or something, doing running drills, and you know Lasagna's out right now. I was like, there's a lot of guys out, and if the Yankees are the Yankees do it right, I mean Severino should be in the bullpen next year, and you have, I mean, to me he would be in the bullpen. So would Clark Schmidt, and unless he shows otherwise that he can be a starter. I have him in the bullpen. Multi- long relief guys, Michael King, you know, bullet guys that can throw multiple innings of bullets and be a bridge from the starters to the relievers. We need several of those guys because it takes the load off of the the the, the, the one inning relievers. And if you have guys there, were converted starters, they're converting downward to to you know multiple inning guys, not upward from one inning guys to two three inning guys. Okay, the downward conversions I think it's a little bit more a little less dangerous and temperamental. Then the other conversion upward, asking guys to do more than they're usually used to doing, can put them at risk. You know, but if you're converting guys downward again, especially hard throwing guys like King and Severino, they can have ridiculous value. And Severino's a free agent after next year. He's got one more year at this four-year extension that the Yankees didn't really enjoy hardly any of. So because of injury, so I, last thing I want to do is risk him putting him in the rotation, expecting him to no, no. When you bring in a free agent starter, you trade for a free agent starter. Keep developing guys like Luis Hill. Don't rush him. You know, let him develop other guys. Luis Medina, they have some arms in there that they can eventually become pretty valuable. I mean, they might have to trade one of these guys, like a Medina or an Oswald Peraza or something like that, and, 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 and a move for a bigger player. And I get it, but, you know, they have depth. 
behind those guys too, or aside from them too, kind of offset losing. I mean, especially in the infield, they drafted Trey Sweeney, they've got Anthony Volpe. You know, they've got quite a few guys that if they moved in Oswald Peraza, you know, and I'm not advocating for that, but if you can get the right player, then okay. But when you move a guy like that, at least they at least have other guys at that position to up the middle. Now the Yankees would be okay in the farm and still have guys to, you know, just in the, in the event that they don't bring in a big free agent shorts up, they have guys waiting in the wings that are ready to come out really soon and, and contribute. So strike first, guys. Cashman, whoever whoever the GM is, if it's not Cashman, you know, please strike first. Be aggressive this off season, okay? And don't be afraid to overpay for the right guy. Let's, let's stop getting these mediocre guys and expecting or, or or guys that are either getting a reunion doing a reunion with some guy that we had that pitched for us seven years ago or getting a guy six years too late like they did with Darren O'Day. I mean, should, we'd had him should have had him at thirty or twenty eight, not thirty five. Like you know, those types of deals. So I, I think it would, it would be wise to avoid them and continue getting younger and more athletic. But guys, be early. Strike first. Being first, in a lot of cases, is better than having the best deal. Be first.